So we've said that the membrane potential of a cell can be changed by allowing ions to flow across the membrane from one side to the other. Let's get into some of the details of how that actually can happen. We're gonna start by focusing on sodium ions. Sodium ions are really key players in causing depolarization of membranes. So um, what we're showing here are some channels that are specific to sodium. And these are called sodium voltage gated channels. They open in response to changes in voltage. So let's go over to the schematic over here. What we're looking at is a close up of the plasma membrane of a neuron. So we're zoomed in on the axon right there. Here's the plasma membrane and we're focused in on this protein in purple. This is the ion channel. It is ordinarily closed. So when the cell is at rest, when the membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts, this channel is going to be closed. It does not allow sodium to flow through. If there is some sort of a stimulus applied to this cell. And if that stimulus causes the membrane to depolarize a little bit, um, there's a special value here. If the, if the membrane potential reaches minus 55, okay, so it started at minus 70, if it swings up to minus 55, that's called a threshold potential. That threshold potential is what will cause these ion channels to open. So at threshold, the ion channel is gonna switch from this conformation over to this one. So see, there's just a little channel that has opened up now. And this would allow sodium ions to rush through. Specifically, the sodium ions would rush from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell, because that's just what sodium wants to do. That's sodium following its own electrochemical gradient. So what's that going to do? Essentially, that's gonna cause the membrane potential to climb towards sodium's equilibrium potential, the thing we learned to calculate with the Nernst equation in the last chapter. So as we bring sodium ions from outside to inside, we're essentially, we're, we're moving positive charges, right? From outside to inside of the cell. And this is depolarizing the cell. This might even bring the membrane potential up above zero. We might even end up over in the positive side for membrane potential. And something else is going to happen when we reach a positive membrane potential, once we make it all the way up to plus 30 millivolts for the membrane potential, then something else happens with these channels. They're gonna snap closed. And the way that that happens is kind of interesting. See how there's this ball and chain hanging off on this side? Uh, that ball is gonna swing up into position and close off one side of the channel. So this is now entering what's called a refractory period and this is, a, this is a, um, a confirmation in which it's not allowing sodium ions to flow anymore. Okay, so sodium stops crossing the membrane, um, but it's gonna take a little bit of time for this channel to get reset to its original resting state. So this is called a refractory period. The channel's just kind of inactivated during this period of time. So what we've just seen right here, this is a classic example of voltage gating. This channel is literally responding to changes in the voltage across the membrane. So it's a voltage gated ion channel. Let's talk about one other type of ion. So this was all for sodium. This is how sodium is transported um, during depolarization. Potassium, potassium is interesting because it's got a couple of different types of channels that exist in the plasma membrane. There are some channels that are just literally always open, so we would say that they are not gated. And these are called leakage channels for potassium. These just always allow potassium to leak across the plasma membrane down its electrochemical gradient. So this is actually um, the fact that these channels exist. This is why the, the potassium equilibrium potential is such a strong contributor to the resting membrane potential of a cell. Potassium is really a key contributor because the membrane is, is pretty permeable to potassium just ordinarily, even at rest. On top of that, on top of having those channels that are always open, there are also voltage-gated potassium channels. And in this case, at resting potential, these channels are closed. 
um, but they have a different criteria for when they snap open. Remember for sodium over here, we said they open when we reach a, a threshold potential, minus 55. Not so for potassium. Potassium, these channels are only going to open when the membrane potential makes it all the way to plus 30. So essentially, just tying this all back in, as the sodium channels get deactivated at plus 30, at that same same triggering event is what causes potassium channels to be opened. So they're kind of opposites of each other. So if um, potassium channels open at that point and potassium then flows down its electrochemical gradient, this is what's going to cause the cell to become repolarized. There's a high concentration, gra uh, concentration gradient ordinarily. There's a lot of potassium inside of the cell. And when these channels open, that potassium is going to rush outwards. So moving positive charges outside of the cell, that's going to repolarize the cell and bring it back ultimately towards um, that resting value of minus 70. 